Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us, in particular for our panel. So we've got our, our usual panel of four, um, four including myself, um, today, um, and we are recording. So um, I just want to introduce our panel discussion today. My name is Kaylee, and I am the Vice President of the Hastings Business Women's Network. Um, and with us today, we have Leslie Williams and Sandra McGann, as well as Danielle. And so we're going to be providing updates from three very different but very important perspectives. And we're mindful that a lot of our members and, and, and their guests are actually watching this via recording on YouTube. So a big hello to all of you. Um, and we might start right with you, Leslie, from um, an important update from a state government perspective. Well, thank you very much, Kaylee. And it's uh, great to be with you guys again uh, to provide the update to our business community and particularly for our women from the HBWN and uh, it's great to have Sandra and Dan on as well. Um, I guess, uh, well, really interesting times, isn't it? We probably looked back two or three weeks ago when we thought we were all going really well and, you know, we were congratulating the community and we continue to do that. Obviously, we had a significant milestone last week. We reached a million tests in New South Wales, but I guess the message that uh, goes alongside that is uh, we cannot be complacent and we only need to look over the border, uh, listen to what's happening on the news. Even this morning, we're seeing, starting to see new community cases, transmission cases in New South Wales, clusters starting to appear. Um, and whilst we're not uh, at the point where Victoria is uh, yet, um, we cannot afford to be complacent about this. And uh, I think all of us have seen uh, out in the community where the social distancing kind of has gone a little bit out the window. Um, you know, the other day I saw a couple of people greet each other with a hug and, uh, you know, we just, I, I think we just need to be really conscious that we are not out of the woods yet. Um, and we, the only way that we're going to really control the virus is if all of us as individuals uh, stick to um, those recommendations of social distancing, uh, making sure that our personal hygiene is kept up to straps, good hand washing, and more than ever before, if you have any symptoms, all of those COVID testing places are still uh, available in our local community. Uh, you must make sure you can go and get tested. Um, and of course, while you're waiting for your test, you should um, self-isolate. Really, really important. Um, you know, obviously, the other challenge for particularly uh, on the North Coast and, uh, and the changes that are happening is the border closures. Um, you know, obviously, the border closure to the south, but the border opening uh, to the north um, really uh, makes things uh, a little bit complex, uh, particularly because we're in, uh, in the middle of our school holiday period. But um, I, I think that just really uh, makes me want to stress even more the reason why we just can't afford to be complacent uh, when it comes to those uh, social distance requirements and the so on. In fact, you know, we've had a number of people ring our office uh, talking about their concern that they're seeing, you know, in Port Macquarie particularly, lots of Victorian number plates and so on. Um, my message to them is if you do the right thing as an individual, though, uh, it's about keeping yourself safe. Um, you don't need to worry about the fact that there's Victorians here if you continue to social distance and you continue your personal hygiene and your good hand washing, uh, because that is actually what stops the spread of the virus. Um, so um, I'm going to leave it at that, but um, you know I'll, I'm happy to take some questions uh, along the way if there's other things people want to expand on. Um, I know that Sandra and Dan will both talk about uh, the uh, grant funding that's still there. Um, but again, I, I guess the other point to make is just encourage people to keep um, watching the website. You know, obviously all the links go through my website. Um, the public health orders are all in place there. And the other thing that's actually really detailed um, and is really great for small business is that on the website there are um, templates for developing COVID safe measures for local businesses. And they're all, uh, you know, split up into different industries. So it's really easy to get on there and see what it is that you should be doing and what your COVID safe measures should look like for your local business. So um, yeah, happy, happy to talk further about that as we go through. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Leslie. And again, just some really strong messages and some strong advice from you regarding distancing, hygiene, as well as testing. So. Thank you for that. And um, we will probably have some questions, but for now we might go straight to you, Danielle, if that's okay, um, to give us an update from a grants and funding point of view and what 
what you've been focusing on in your business. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having us again today. Um, we've been uh, looking at all sorts of grant funding for small business and individuals, um, as we do normally anyway, but COVID's put a definite spin on that. Um, the funding that we're looking at at the moment is still continuing on um, with the bushfire funding. Now, that funding closes on the 9th of August, and we, we still want to make sure that people aren't self-excluding. Like we've got a lot of people that um, still should, are eligible to apply and can apply, so they should be looking at that. There's also some the $3,000 um, small business funding that's come out from Service New South Wales as well. Um, there's a couple of eligibility criteria that goes through that, such as um, if you've experienced a 30% decline in turnover from March till July. And there's some other um, criteria as well that need to be compliant. But if anyone's concerned about um, looking at uh, strategies for their business moving forward, and um, like a, it's, not, it's definitely not a handout from the government, it's 100% a, it's a hand up. And um, that money people need to consider will be going into rural areas if they're, particularly the bushfire funding, so if you're compliant in a regional area to comply, like Port Macquarie, for example, is, um, people need to be looking into that seriously before uh, the deadline of the 9th of August. And that's pretty much it from us at the moment. We're working um, pretty hard with a lot of um, businesses um, and reviewing uh, their grant strategies moving forward. There's a lot of funding, actually, that, that will be, we, we are preempting will be coming out from both state and federal government. And having that preparedness and grant strategy now um, is vital. It's absolutely crucial, actually, if you're looking at that as part of your um, business strategy. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm. Again, some good, clear messages regarding deadlines. So mm. I'm sure we're going to hear the word deadline referred to by you, Sandra. So we might go to you for your update and introduction, if you like. Okay. Thanks, Kaylee, And good morning, everyone. Thanks for having us again. Um, my name's Sandra McGann. I run um, an accounting firm called Sea Change Accounting. Um, we've been helping businesses over the last few months um, with the stimulus measures um, aimed at them, um, particularly JobKeeper and the cash flow boost. Um, so July's been another busy month for us um, on both fronts. Uh, with JobKeeper, we've um, been working with businesses getting their June claim in for JobKeeper, so doing the monthly report. Um, and what we're finding is um, with, that, with the businesses, there's still a lot of confusion out there about the eligibility. Um, the businesses feel that they may not have experienced the, the decline for June or that they're not anticipating that their decline for July is going to meet the 30% so that they're they're ruling themselves out and they think that they're no longer eligible and that's not the case. So with JobKeeper, once you're, once you're eligible, you, you are in and that monthly report's really just to let um, the ATO and Treasury know how businesses are tracking. So um, important that um, as long as you're continuing to pay your employees that minimum amount for JobKeeper that you are still eligible. Um, we have received some calls from the ATO and believe that they're calling um, businesses and um, tax agents just to make sure that um, businesses are doing the right thing in terms of the one in all in rule that they're offering JobKeeper to all their eligible employees and that they're continuing to pay them the minimum 1500 a fortnight. Um, so that was really just a check on that and we believe that they will be commencing audit activity. Um, and that they have already done so. Um, so it's really important just to keep good records that all oh, your nomination forms have been um, given to your employees and that you have those back signed um, and that you have records just to, um, to show how you've estimated your decline in turnover um, when you first applied. Um, just another reminder um, with the 2020 tax year um, that JobKeeper is in fact an assessable payment so you need to include that in your income if you're lodging your 2020 tax return um, straight away. Um, and in terms of deadlines, um, the June claim must be completed by the end of tomorrow. So the 14th of July is the last day to actually to get in and claim that if you haven't already done so. Um, and then the second um, thing that we've been working on is with the cash flow boost. Um, anybody who's lodging business activity statements on a quarterly basis um, would have received, if they're eligible, would have received the first um, minimum cash flow boost of 10,000. 
um, as a credit against their BAS. Um, so the second part of that will come into the June BAS. So that should be a minimum of um, 5,000, then with another 5,000 to come into the September BAS. Those lodging on a, a monthly basis, um, there's a different calculation for that, but that should flow into their, um, their June BAS as well. Um, I've heard you say before, Sandra, that that happens automatically. That's right. No one has to do anything. That's correct, yes. Once you lodge your BAS, that's right, yes. Um, so that just comes in as a credit against your account. So depending on, on what amount you owe, you may get a refund or it may just offset your GST and um, pay as you go withholding debt that's, um, that's with the ATO. Um, the cash flow boosts actually a non-assessable um, payment. So that one's a tax-free payment. So just another one to keep in mind. Great. That's really about it from us. Right. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to check in with the chat box because we've got a couple of questions. So I might start with you, Leslie. I know you've got a question um, for Sandra. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Sandra about, I mean, obviously we have our, our normal deadlines when it comes to tax time, you know, when personal tax returns need to be in and business tax returns. Have they made any changes to those because of the disruption of COVID or are they still hard in place? Um, for the 19 tax return, they actually did extend the tax deadline. So usually if you're lodging under an agent, you've got till around the 15th of May to lodge your tax return. So we were already working on the 19 tax returns and they did extend that out to the end of um, June for tax agents. Um, at this stage for the 2020 tax returns, we've not heard. So if you're lodging it yourself, you have until the 31st of October to lodge. Um, other than that, if you're with an agent, then you still have till the 15th of May 2020. So we'll just need to wait and see about that one. Wow, no wonder you're so busy. Um, I, I know you get asked this a lot and um, from, from our members, but one of the questions that came through in, in preparation for today's panel discussion was around JobKeeper. And I know you don't have a crystal ball, but do you have a sense of what might happen after September? Like when it is due um, to yeah, at, at this stage, it's continuing till September. Um, we believe Treasury are conducting a, mid, a midway review um, and they're um, going to be announcing something on the 23rd of July is the date that we've been given at this stage. So by the time we meet next fortnight, um, we should have a clearer picture. There is some speculation that it might be um, paired back um, to certain industries or certain areas, but we're just not sure at the moment. So we'll just have to wait and see um, for the 23rd to see what, what it's gonna look like going forward. Um, given that we've already, we've, we've had three months that we've claimed for, by the time the 23rd of July comes around, we will have already had two, four, the, both of the fortnights for July will have been completed. So um, that's another month that's already sort of down the track, so. Um, you know, we're just looking at really the August and September JobKeeper to see what will happen for that. Yeah, well, that might be, I mean, I know a lot of people are just feeling very nervous about what's going to potentially happen after September. I know I speak to a lot of people about um, their staffing and whether they're going to be able to afford to be able to continue on with the same level of, of mm. staffing as they have, because once they stop getting that job keeper, I know there's a lot of planning happening. But I know similarly to what um, Leslie touched on, there's just that feeling of unease, isn't there, for a lot of business yeah. owners. So um, that's a question that's on a lot of people's minds. And then I guess the indirect effects of that, that if a lot of people do lose their jobs in September because their employees are unable to keep paying them, that the knock-on effects of what that could could mean for our community. So it sounds like um, we, we have to definitely continue listening to experts and to, to continue doing all the right things, as Leslie indicated, um, to do everything we can to, to continue rebuilding as a business community and, um, and hope that we're able to pull through this. Um, so I'm mindful that um, we've had three updates now. So can I just check in and see whether any of you have any um, questions for each other and then we'll go to any final words. Um, I don't. I don't have any questions, but I did want just want to add, um, it just because I know a lot of the HPWN members are involved in other organisations uh, across the community. That there was an announcement. Um, I think it was last week, um, or might have been just before that, um, about a thousand dollars of support for local sporting organisations. 
uh, which is being distributed through the state sports organisations. So, um, you know, bearing in mind, it was really just put in place, it was over $27 million to, to support community sports going back, uh, which happened obviously in the last week or so. Um, so if, if you're involved with any sporting organisation, you should just kind of check in again, it's all details are on the Service New South Wales website. Um, and it's being run through the sports, um, the sports uh, department. Um, and, you know, obviously that's in addition to the personal support that parents get through active kids and creative kids. But, you know, it's, it's not a lot of money, but I think uh, for sporting organisations that particularly winter sports that have already lost so much of their season anyway, all of that money does help along the way. So people should check in uh, with the Service New South Wales and just look up, um, you know, local sporting grants it's in there sporting grants. okay and i'll put something on our poppy connect um links as well about that because i do know that you know that's a definitely a hot topic um and yes. again something that's really important to our community yeah i'll, I'll send the link through to you so thanks leslie and leading and leading on from that leslie like it is a real opportunity for sporting groups and other community organizations to undertake preparedness at this time and look into grants um really knuckle down and see what sort of strategy they've got in terms of um, longevity um, and getting that preparedness done now is absolutely the time to get that, particularly when there is funding directed specifically to organisations such as sporting groups. Yeah, Excellent. yeah so true, Jen, so true. Well, there you go. As usual, just like loads of information and, and lots for us to take in, but um, obviously the way you, you ladies presented is is really easy to understand. So before we finish up, I'll just see if there's any final words, maybe starting with you, Sandra. Um, really just a reminder that tomorrow's the last day to um, to claim for JobKeeper for June. Um, so don't let that one slip um, and don't rule yourself out either. If you're uncertain, um, seek, seek some advice from your accountant um, or if you're doing it yourself, um, yeah, more than happy to help out if anyone's got some questions. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, anything from you, Danielle, to finish up? Look, similar to what we've always said is uh, don't self-disqualify. <laughs> it's exactly what Sandra's saying as well. Um, if you're uncertain, please call your accountant, call anyone that you can. Uh, particularly in this area, there's a lot of people that um, are, are uncertain whether they're eligible. And this area, particularly due to bushfires, is very eligible for a lot of funding. And that does close again on the 9th of August. Yeah, you're so right. I hear people all the time think, I didn't think I'd be able to get this. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I'd be able to get that. I yeah. ask. And, you know, if the funding yeah. is there to help, then that's what it's there for. And, and it definitely has helped a lot of people in a lot of ways, particularly to be able to, um, to reopen or to get back into business quicker than they might have been able to otherwise, which is, again, really, really important to us because it's about participation, it's about employment, it's about being able to get back into community and, and reinvest in our own community. So lots of good news stories there, but your messages are really getting through because people are starting, they talk about it amongst themselves too and think maybe I should ask about that. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for continuing to spread those important messages. Um, and to you, Leslie, any final words? Uh, look, really just to uh, continue to urge people to not, not to be complacent. Just This just isn't the time to do it. Uh, let's, you know, keep working together, but that's about making sure you take personal responsibility in terms of social distancing and hygiene and making sure you get tested. Um, you know, please, if, if you've got any questions, I mean, I think the thing is that uh, this is a pandemic that none of us have been through before. Uh, it's all a learning curve. Um, there are lots of different restrictions, lots of uh, lots of information out there. So whether you need uh, need a question answered, whether it's about a closure board, a border closure, sorry, or about testing, or uh, it's about a, a grant that might be available to you, um, please just ring our office. We're here to offer that service to you. And uh, you know, if we don't know the answer, we'll make sure we point you in the right direction to get the answer. That's excellent. And again, it's just so good to know that we've got that single source of, tr of, of truth if we need it. Um, and I know, you know, that Leslie and, and her team are definitely open to any question. There's no silly questions. Um, no. no one expects you to know the answers. Mm -hmm. And I, what I really appreciate and, and got out of your message, which I think is really important, Leslie, is how we can just take personal responsibility because I know it's a little disheartening when we're in our community and we're hearing people say, oh, the 
pe the tourists shouldn't be here or the Melbourne people shouldn't be here. That we, we don't know the full story and it's really great to see so many people in our community at the moment mm. um, investing in our tourism and all of our hospitality and making our town come alive again. But I really liked your message around just take personal responsibility around distancing and hygiene and then we will be okay. And use that energy to spread those sort of messages rather than using energy to, to maybe be judgy or, or to be critical of, of people just trying to do the, the right thing. And, and, and coming to our community, we, we've been wanting this for months and months and months and now, and now it's here. It's, it's easy to feel nervous, but I really, I love your, your approach, which is let's just be personally responsible for our hygiene and our distancing and then, you know, we're doing the best we can. So... A big thank you for your taking time out at, at what is a busy time because of school holidays and um, end of financial year and, and, and definitely a time of um, a little bit of unsettledness around um, what's coming next. So a thank you for taking time out of your big days. And um, until next time, take care and all the best. So Thanks, I'm just going to stop the recording now um, and feel free to stay on the line. We're just going to stop that so we can upload it to the cloud.